Welcome back. You're still watching and listening to The Key Points live on TV3, also live on 3FM 92.7 and online at 3news.com, also on our Facebook page, TV3 Ghana. So we have on Zoom Dr. Koja Santi, he's with CDD. Also on Zoom, Honorable Peter Tobu, uh, MP, NDC MP for Wild West and a member of the Defense and Interior Committee. And in studio, we have Richard Nyama uh, with the NPP, Di Deputy Director of Communications, and Justice uh, Abdullahi, a private legal practitioner in studio as well. So we're moving on next to look at the uh, vetting of the Special Prosecutor nominee. Before we launch into that conversation, let's take a story that has been put together to put matters in better perspective. Hours, Kisi Ejabing answered some hard questions about claims he is a surrogate for a law firm, Africa Legal Associates, a firm belonging to NPP member Gabi Asario Tridaku. He also answered questions about his age, being the youngest SP at age 43, as well as issues relating to his independence and his track record in fighting corruption. The Office of the Special Prosecutor is mandated to investigate and prosecute all corruption-related offences, abuse of office and conflict of interest pertaining to public officers, politically exposed persons and persons in the private sector. Mr. Jabing maintained that his experience makes him more than qualified for the current role, not his age. I was called to the bar some 18 years ago. I qualify to sit on the Supreme Court of Ghana. I have taught criminal law, especially in the University of Ghana, for 15 years, continuously. Supervises the collation of evidence and all that for presentation to the Attorney General. Without me, the Attorney General's office will be poorer in terms of those uh, prosecutions. Mr. Jabing mounted a strong rejection of claims that he is a surrogate of another law firm and that he had links with the botched Ejapa deal. I was not involved in the Ejapa transaction in any form or manner by any stretch of the imagination, however fertile. I wasn't involved in the deal. I was nowhere near it. Indeed, until it started coming up, I didn't, I didn't even know what it was. The special prosecutor indicated that although he will fight corruption, he may not end it entirely. I'm not naive to assume that I'm coming to stop corruption. There is no way I can stop corruption. Go Martin Amidu resigned, claiming undue executive interference. But will the new OSP succumb to pressure to resign when the going gets tough? My first inclination will be to persevere along uh, because that is my calling and that is the oath that I have sworn. Unless it becomes so unbearable, um, then I will say uh, that the Republic should take its job. Approved by the 275 members of parliament, Mr. Jabing has a seven-year tenure to live up to his track record of being committed to the law and the fight against corruption. Um. Right, so uh, those were scenes from uh, the vetting of um, Special Prosecutor nominee um, Mr. Kisi Ejabing there, lasted about three hours there. Uh, Honorable Tobo, I understand you'd like to make a quick clarification on an issue about the IGP. Honorable. Honorable Tobu, can you hear me? Yes, please. Yes. I can hear you. Yes. So you, you need to make a quick clarification, is that it, on the IGP issue? Yes, yes, yes. Please. Very well. So briefly... Um, very, very, very quick one. Mm -hmm. A wired man is an angel rep replica. So, so uh, somebody sorry. is talking about using technology as an accelerator in the fight against mm -hmm. corruption. That is the best example. If you wire the police officer, any human being who is wired, and you know that somebody is watching you as you perform your duty, they become like angels. Mm -hmm. So if you want to reduce corruption, let's wire the police officer with, 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 with cameras. We also have to realize that political interference is one of our biggest problems. So if we deal with these two, I'm telling you, all the government agencies that you find, within six months to one year, you will begin to see change. Very well. And that is the truth. Very well. Uh, uh, Thank uh, you very uh, much. Uh, um, I would insist Honorable that. Peter Tobu. Uh, uh, Dr. Sante, let me come to you on the uh, Special Prosecutor nominees vetting. Uh, your thoughts quickly on that, or briefly, sorry, on that. I know uh, CDD, as one of many civil society organizations, had some concerns about not about his credentials or his, you know, uh, competence, but 
some supposed association with the establishment or the government, and that was, you know, something concerning to civil society. Uh, Dr. Santi, uh, let's know from yeah. you if the vetting resolved all these concerns you had about conflicts of interest, for instance. Yeah, I think um, he had an opportunity um, to uh, explain himself and uh, how uh, his relationship with uh, uh, individuals in government where people thought that it might create, um, uh, you know, perceptions that you don't want to be carrying into um, a position where you are supposed to be very independent from government. Uh, so, you know, with all the experiences we've had with, uh, um, you know, the office after it's set up and its inability to, to take off, I think everybody was really concerned that we didn't want to basically uh, <laughs> almost kill uh, the, another opportunity to really get that office going. So I think that, um, you know, that those issues were dealt with. Mm. But, you know, uh, conflict of interest is always continuing. So it's really a question of uh, what systems and structures are put in place to ensure that the Office of the Special Prosecutor, or the Special Prosecutor is insulated from any kind of, uh, uh, you know, political interference. Um, and then, you know, I'm, so I'm glad that he recognizes that this is going to be a very lonely job. Yeah. Um, you would have fewer yeah. friends uh, from now on. And it's for your own good that uh, that situation. But it's, 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 I mean, you have to encourage somebody who decides to take that path. Because this is not a job that you have people lined up <laughs> like, uh, 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 you know, the DCE one where you had applications, mm. 100 and so, you know, applications going. No, this is, this is a very, very difficult job because, you know, it requires a lot of integrity. You are coming against, you know, uh, powerful people in society and you know, on a daily basis, you're going to have all kinds of pressures on you. Mm. So it's good that he recognizes that that is, that is going to be a challenge. And he has accepted that that is what he has to do. Very well. But it has to be actions. Mm. See, actions always speak better than words. So mm. that's what we are all going to look forward to, to see what exactly he does. Very well. Now, it took, um, his vetting lasted three hours. And soon thereafter, you know, within an hour, he was recommended for approval by the House. The committee recommended him unanimously, I must add, for approval by the House. What did you make of it, particularly as going into this vetting, there were lots of issues around, you know, the supposed association with certain individuals in government, conflict of interest issues and all of that? No, I think, I think once, he had, once he had dealt with that, and I think uh, the, I mean, some of the questions were good. Some of the questions uh, I, I thought was, Irrelevant to, you know, the the inquiry uh, that uh, Parliament was uh, or the assessment that Parliament w you know needed to to do. But you know, he he proved that he is very much aware of the uh, the act that he's working with, the the constitutional framework within which he's operating. He has experience uh, litigating uh, as a criminal lawyer. Um, he, he seems to have reflected on how best to tackle the monster of corruption uh, in our country. And he has some, some good ideas, you know, uh, for uh, working on the preventive side, because that, for me, I think is an area that we have neglected too many times. And often, you know, when you focus too much on the custodial centers, you miss you miss out on how you know uh, dealing with behavior. You know, you all you always have to have a le create a legitimate expectation that when people do things, first of all, they will be found out, and second of all, if they are found out, they would be prosecuted, and if they are prosecuted, you know, they would find themselves you know behind bars, and their yeah. assets are going to be recovered. So. It is a legitimate expectation that you create, but that does not mean that you have to deal a hundred people. No. It might just be two people.
mm. but there it creates a certain expectation that then begins to uh, let people who really want to, to do this uh, begin to think twice. Uh, Double Wood did that very brilliantly with surcharging, you know. And once that is repetitive, it creates a, a different mindset uh, in the minds of people that who have to make a calculation: Do I risk it or not? So I I am looking forward, you know, uh, to engaging him. Uh, what I worry about is, you know, how to build synergies with with the Shraj and other uh, organizations so that he can have his focus on politically exposed persons. Because that's what the the law really uh, uh, is, well. is is focused on. So I don't want him doing corruption generally. Uh, there are many, many institutions uh, there that uh, can help, but he has a special focus that I believe that uh, he should uh, try and keep to. Very well. Uh, Doc, we'll need to let you go, but in just maybe 30 seconds, Thank your you. expectations of, of, the, of the special prosecutor in just 30 seconds. I mean, so my sense of him is that uh, you know, Kisia Jabi could, as a private uh, criminal lawyer and uh, a lawyer of a certain repute, and a young lawyer as such who's, who's done well and uh, probably has made also good money, he didn't need this job. So the first time I heard that he had been nominated, I asked myself, why would he choose this? Because if you don't do well and you are attacked to have been either compromised, you saw your reputation and you know this will go with you for many years because you will have many years to live you know god willing so um if he has making this choice then it means he has thought about what um uh, you know he's going to do so um we we really want this office to get off the ground mm. and the best we can do is to you know work with him hopefully he brings something new and he succeeds because Farewell. we desperately need our Farewell. institutions to work. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kojo Asante. We'll let you go at this point. We do appreciate your time and your contributions. Dr. Kojo Asante is the Director of Advocacy and Policy Engagement with the CDD Ghana. Uh, Richard. Yeah. Thank you very much. The Office of the Special Prosecutor has been uh, in existence for the past three years. Yeah. And there are still some issues with it. Your what are your expectations about this incoming special prosecutor with regards to this office? First and foremost, his, the speed with which he was uh, uh, approved uh, tells you something. Mm. Uh, there is something common between he and the uh, uh, IGP, acting IGP. That is integrity and humility. I've had uh, experience with uh, Mr. Kisia Jabe. Uh, many people don't know, but uh, in 2010, 2011, when I, I took uh, on Honorable uh, Mohamed Mutaka, uh, then sports minister, yes. His, his representative, his lawyer was Kisia Jabe. And we, we, that, that, that was my very first experience yeah. of him. And, uh, it's, it comes out when, when you sit with him. He's a solid guy. He knows what he's doing. And like uh, 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 Kojo said, he's, he's made it in that sense. He's proven it academically. He's a lecturer as well. Now, uh, they, they, you expected that there will be a lot of rancor in the, the, the vetting process. This issue about his uh, relation to Ajapa. Yes. Martin Amidi threw it out there. Uh, when he did, the question was, what proof did he put out? He's come, and I hope Martin will respond with some evidence, because we are tired of the epistles and the diatribes. If he's coming back, he should come back with some proper evidence that we can deal with. Um, he mentioned something, and uh, I can relate to that, he, that he would use the Anas principle. He's been Anas's lawyer as well. Mm -hmm. That's a common friend that we both have. And in those my uh, anti-corruption days, 
And that was one major source. Someone that I worked with to put my, my evidence together mm. before I, I, I proceeded with any uh, case. And I think it is in the state's interest to uh, 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 probably find a way of training and using such private uh, detectives uh, behind the scenes to assist someone like him. You see, the, because the act of corruption uh, is, is, is like a like marriage. Like I said, a secretive. It's a marriage. If you don't come out and tell your uh, marriage problems, nobody knows. Mm. Okay? And until there is some sour grapes within the marriage, nobody hears anything. And in most cases, you don't hear anything. But if you find a way of getting into the marriage and listening and getting evidence, it will help. And so I pray uh, his anas principle does not end in the vetting committee, but is, 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 yes, it's yeah. implemented. And the state should give him a budget to get those things going. We need it because yeah. um, unfortunately, uh, uh, it's a culture that is deep in our blood as a people. <laughs> Uh, corruption is very accepted. Actually, if you are not corrupt, you seem to be sick in this country. <laughs> yeah, well, so uh, that is a problem, and sure. we need to tackle it and tackle it. Justice Abdullah, your thoughts on uh, Kisei Japlin's performance and um, your expectations of him. I know you are into the fight against corruption, seriously, so this obviously is a passionate issue for you. Uh, I'm not, um, I am elated once again um, for having a relatively younger man, um, almost my age mate, to, to be steering the affairs in the fight against corruption. Um, I, I have been here with Johnny Hughes, your, your colleague, um, um, constantly screaming and yelling at our leaders for the neglect and then sometimes the wanton waste of resources, um, among other issues indeed. Um, of course, naturally corruption being the central feature of some of these discussions. Um, we have been fighting this. Um, we have been fighting um, to get the best out of our leaders. And I think the person of Kisi Ejabin, um, um, I, I know him better as a lawyer um, because we all probably make living out of the court complex and other <laughs> few places. So um, I, I have absolutely no doubt that if he is given the appropriate resources and the protection, he will excel fantastically in getting us what we need. Yeah. And and I would insist that he has set himself. Um, I know he's, oh, he said he will guard his independence jealously. Those were his words. He, well, uh, he did say that, but um, he is certainly not oblivious of what he said. Um, mm -hmm. the, co the customarily um, attitude that uh, people bring on board when, when you have a leader in that position. Um, your chiefs, your family members, your elders, your uncles are the first corporates. They will call you and uh, Kujo, and then the, the pressure starts. You right. have to do, oh, that man is my very good friend. Oh, please see to him for me. Mm -hmm. eh? And then when you go back home, the, the insults and other accusations start. So really, these are real. These are systemic corruption that we have as, as part of our culture. But the position he occupies is a position that can, and if he really wants to do it, completely get himself rid of some of these interferences. Yeah. As for the politicians, they will come after you. Yeah. It is normal, it's natural. He should expect that, and I know he's expecting it. Yeah. But what is important is how he can get his way around these things by making sure that whoever, whoever is found culpable of anything wrong is adequately catered for in accordance with law. It is only that that the integrity that we all know him to have built today would continuously guard him. Because really, the moment people start seeing the discriminatory approaches to issues, it is a point where the confidence and the trust Very well. gets lost. Very well. And I would urge him to guard. Well, like, luckily, yes. Kisi doesn't need the money uh, because he's made hey. enough. Um, <laughs> I mean, if, uh, he's yep. made some good money. And so I believe and trust that he'll be able to do this job very well without very well. really having to look out for the money. Because Thank really, you. but for the money, he wouldn't, if it is for the money, he wouldn't be Thank here. Thank you so much. doesn't even come with money. I'm so sorry. Somehow. I'm so sorry. The time is just fast. I mean, that is so unfair. I, I'm, I'm it's so, so unfair sorry, to me. But
it's, it's no, um, no, listen, no, no, it's seriously it. unfair to me. Um, and this is the second time you are doing this to me. Up. I'm <laughs> so sorry. But if you give me a small time, how do I, how do I even make? There are four I, people around yes, the table. You know, but we need everybody to. has enough time to. to I don't have. Since, I'm still waiting. Uh, <laughs> exactly. You see no, the point. No, 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 no. But Honorable Tobu, you have the last Peter, thirty Peter seconds, please. Had all the time. Honorable Tobu, you Peter, have the last thirty seconds. He did all the discussion. So, thank you so thirty much, seconds, I'm please. It's okay. Let me use the thirty seconds. And, uh, <laughs> it's so not right. But Every time you do this, pain. Thing. it's not true. Pain. It's not and true. let's not concentrate on the severity of legal punishment. Severity of legal punishment has filled our prisons, yet crime is still out there. I'm so excited about his youthful age, 43 years, and I think that they have something in common. He has something in common with the IGP. They both have intelligence, they have energy, and their integrity will be tested. Integrity mm. in private practice is different from your integrity that's required in public office. Very Many well. Ghanaians outside this country are doing so well, but when they come back, because of the systemic challenges, they find themselves okay. wanted. Thank I you wish so all much. Of them well, and I wish uh, had been so well. Let him be proactive and preventive. Thank and you very much. Stop <laughs> thinking about deterrence. Honorable Peter you so Tobu, much. thank you so much. Honorable Peter is Tobu so is right. there. <laughs> is the NDCMP for no, this one the I, I, I may have to bring a petition. member of the Interior and Defence <laughs> Committee. No, no, I need, I need to bring a petition Justice, on this. Justice, please. <laughs> no, no, no. 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 <laughs> Justice Abdullah <laughs> is a private legal practitioner. I will, I will compensate you for that. I have been for sitting that. here for the past one and a half hours and I've spoken for the last Mr. Richard Yama is the Deputy Director of Communications with the MPP. And viewers and listeners, thank you so much for taking the question. We appreciate your time. And my advice just like watching this. At the same time, <laughs> and I came here just to speak for five minutes. Good. Weekend and stay safe. COVID-19 <laughs> is real. Yeah, boy, yeah, Please five stay minutes. Safe. And my advice just like watching this. <laughs> ah, yeah, <boy>. I'm not... <laughs> Justice. You're coming to impress your vice chancellor. I told you. You can't imagine. Vice chancellor, I told you. Can't imagine this. Justice.